and welcome to today's webinar on AC versus DC coupling. Today's speaker is Eric Benson. He is an electrical engineer and senior application engineer with Schneider Electric Solar. Thank you, Sandra. I also want to thank everybody joining me on the phone today. I hope you're staying safe and healthy, enjoying your time at home if this applies to you. Today, we're going to look at Connect XW Pro AC versus DC coupling. So let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot to cover. XW Pro is compliant with Rule 21 for California, HECO for Hawaii, and PREPA for Puerto Rico. The basic design for the power electronics has remained unchanged, maintaining reliability and versatility, but the control circuitry is new and enhanced with expanded memory and innovative feature sets. We offer the XW Pro single phase by default with three phase coming soon. Efficiency is unsurpassed for a low frequency design. Gateway and Connects Insight 2 are added for a well-rounded offer. Proprietary XAN bus communications provide greater value to the customer. We also feature a 10-year warranty. The XW platform is likely the most versatile anywhere in the market, allowing for an entire range of different applications from commercial to residential to telecom, both on grid and off the grid. Quality and proven reliability ensures the highest level of customer satisfaction. A robust platform and unmatched reliability give the installer an advantage when designing around the needs of the customer. Let's dive into AC coupling. Grid tie PV inverters are current sources only. They cannot produce a usable waveform. The voltage and frequency coming in from the grid are recognized by the PV inverter. And if they're within predetermined limits, then the PV inverter will add the PV current to the AC bus. In the absence of grid power, the PV inverter cannot produce power on its own. It is not grid forming, which is what you need to be AC coupled. In a DC coupled system, the PV energy is regulated through a solar charge controller to a safe voltage for the battery bank. The inverter draws energy from that same DC bus to create AC power for household appliances. In an AC coupled system, the PV energy supplies the AC bus directly. So when grid power is present, the XW Pro will pass that power through directly to the AC appliances and the PV power will offset the demand from the utility. Here's a visual that shows the grid voltage passing through the XW Pro and allowing PV to add power to the AC bus. Any excess power will flow toward the grid. The inverter is also capable of opening up charging to the batteries when needed. We also have state of charge control with the XW Pro when used with a battery monitor or a plug and play battery such as Discover. In a backup scenario, the XW Pro forms the grid voltage and frequency, allowing the PV inverter to produce power. If the loads require more power than PV can supply, the remainder will come from the battery. If more PV is being produced than the loads can consume, the excess power will be supplied to the battery. Here we see an XW chart for the function of frequency shift when using a grid interactive inverter without curtailment capability. We see the inverter is at full power, according to the real-time solar production, while the frequency is within UL parameters. When the battery voltage reaches the bulk voltage, the XW Pro output AC frequency starts to increase. However, it should be noted that legacy inverters that are not curtailing will not react to the frequency shift until after 60.5 hertz, in which case it will shut down. It will count down for 300 seconds and it will attempt to come back online. Legacy PV inverters approved for UL1741 were designed to trip at a relatively narrow voltage and frequency range. The intent was to prevent linemen from a shock hazard by exporting current onto a dead line. 
These older grid tie inverters will supply the maximum amount of PV available until the frequency reaches 60.5 Hz, after which the PV production will cease and a 300 second timer will start once the grid frequency drops below 60.5 Hz. This cycle will continue until the load is sufficient to consume the PV power, or until the grid returns, or until the sun goes down, whichever occurs first. In areas that have frequent outages, battery chemistry should be considered as this kind of bang-bang charging may cause a sealed battery to vent. In backup mode, excess PV will flow into the battery unregulated. For this reason, PV watts should not exceed XW Pro watts. It is always best to assume worst case scenario, for example, the customer is on vacation and the AC loads are minimal. This means virtually all the PV power will be directed to the battery. After the PV flow has been interrupted, the loads will be supported by the battery until the 300 second timer has expired. Rule 21 compliant PV inverters will continue to operate for 300 seconds between 60.5 and 62 Hertz. Rule 21 frequency watt function is optional. The default slope is indicated. Smart PV inverters have a more relaxed frequency window and trip time. The frequency watt function will allow the PV inverter to ramp down the output power rather than completely shut it down. Most grid tie PV inverters are greater than 96% efficient these days, so this can improve overall system efficiency if the loads are consuming PV energy in real time. In regions without time of use, a lead acid chemistry may be used in lieu of a more expensive lithium technology as a standby battery, especially when utility outages are rare and of short duration. Microinverters already comply with 2017 arc fault rapid shutdown requirements, and string inverters will typically have arc fault protection and can easily meet rapid shutdown requirements when used with module level power electronics. Retrofitting existing PV systems may be the fastest growing market for PV with storage solutions. This allows the customer to continue having the benefit of PV production with the satisfaction of having backup power if the grid goes down. When AC coupling with a generator, a relay must be integrated into the system to isolate the AC supply to the PV inverter whenever the generator is running. This is to prevent excess PV from backfeeding the generator. Here we see the batteries depleting because PV production is less than the loads. Once the generator starts, the PV inverter is isolated to prevent turning the generator, arm generator armature backwards. String inverters will have arc fault protection built into them. The use of MLPE such as Tygo TS4F or Fire Raptor rapid shutdown systems will provide the required safety for first responders. It is important to note that virtually all PV inverters will work in an AC coupled configuration with a grid forming inverter. Check with the PV inverter manufacturer to confirm they support AC coupling, as this may affect their willingness to warranty the product. Microinverters comply with rapid shutdown requirements since each PV module has a dedicated inverter. Upon disconnect of AC power, the open circuit voltage of each panel will not be anywhere near the limit of 80 volts DC. Note the RPO can be activated with a normally open external switch. Here we see the aux port pinouts identified for RPO function. When RPO is enabled, a short across pins 2 and 3 will shut down the XW Pro, which in turn will power down the microinverters. Now let's focus on DC coupling. When the grid power is present, the inverter charger will pass that power directly to the AC appliances and the PV power will charge the battery. Once the batteries are full, PV power will be used to support the backup loads. Cell mode allows PV production to be maximized. Gateway allows access to the zero cell feature when used with Continental Control System's watt node meter. Cell block allows selling during a specific period of time. It sells the value of max cell amps back toward the main panel 
and it supports the backup loads. This is important because the system will sell max cell amps regardless of the backup loads, assuming the battery voltage is greater than grid support voltage or the state of charge is greater than the state of charge value for grid support. Uh, state of charge functionality, again, does require use of our battery monitor or the Discover AES battery. Low shave can be set to limit the draw from the grid to the peak value allowed by the utility company during the period when rates are most expensive. Enhanced grid mode is a proprietary function that only works with XAN bus enabled solar charge controllers. The XW Pro follows the three stage output of the MPPT and prioritizes charging of the battery while using any excess to support the grid. In bulk, all available solar is charging the battery. Loads are supported by the grid completely. During the absorption stage, the battery requires a decreasing amount of current to maintain the absorption voltage. That residual power will start supporting the backup loads and reduce the draw from the grid by the same amount. While MPVT is in float, the load is supported by the available P. Here's a chart that shows how the system operates when setting a fixed grid support voltage as opposed to enhanced grid operation. So once you reach the grid support voltage, if you're just setting a standard grid support voltage that's lower than the float voltage of the charge controller, then it's just going to start selling the maximum value of max cell amps. Whereas if you're operating in enhanced grid mode, then it's going to replace that last 20%. So that is actually better for lead acid chemistries. Of course, NEC 690.11 and 690.12 compliance can now be accomplished with our new ArcFault rapid shutdown solution, Disconnect RS. So designers now have the ability to keep it all Schneider Electric. So this solution uses power line communications. It's compatible with Tygo TS4F, ArcFault detection built in compatible with both models of our solar charge controllers, the MPPT-80, which is a high voltage controller, and the MPPT-60, which is a lower voltage controller. Integrated PV disconnect uh, is four pole, so two positive, two negative, if you're using the two string configuration. Two input channels, flexible installation, ambidextrous mounting, either right or left side of the charge controller. So in conclusion, XW Pro can be AC coupled or DC coupled. Remember, you can get better efficiency when you're AC coupling, but only if your loads are consuming power in real time. AC coupling is also great for retrofitting an existing PV system. It's very easy to just insert a battery and an XW Pro and then dedicate the PV and your backup loads to a sub panel, and you're pretty much done. DC coupling offers advantages in the following ways. You can see all of the production on your single gateway monitoring platform, whereas if you're AC coupling, you have to refer to the PV manufacturer's monitoring platform to see what the real-time output is. As far as what you see on the gateway when you're AC coupling, you'll see uh, power diminished on the load panel, and if there's anything left over, it may show power flowing back towards the the XW system, and, and then of course back toward the, the, the grid. The total PV can exceed the XW output continuous rating, where you can't do that when you're AC coupling. You, you have to make sure you don't have more AC coupled power than your XW is rated at. DC coupling does not require the reverse feed protection relay either when you're using a generator. And of course, enhanced grid mode allows you to communicate with the solar charge controllers, the MPPT-60 or the MPPT-80 to prioritize a full charge in the battery before supporting the grid. Keeping it all Schneider Electric is another great reason to DC couple. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much.